Hello and welcome to Marina's Yarn Harbor, a podcast about knitting and yarn. This is episode five. Hello and welcome to the Yarn Harbor. If you are a new viewer, hi, nice to meet you. I hope you enjoy knitting and yarn because that's what I'm talking about. If you are a returning viewer, it's nice to see you back and I hope you're having a really good day. Um, and I hope you all enjoy what I've got for you today. Um, we're gonna start with what I am wearing. I am wearing an Orbit scarf by Janina Kaleo, which I believe uh, is Woolenberry as her tag uh, or her username on Instagram and Ravelry. This is a triangular scarf that is asymmetrical. It is a one skein scarf, probably, um, at least it was for me. <laughs> uh, it is got garter rows and then some really nice yarn over eyelet rows. And it's, it's a nice cozy scarf with a little bit of interest to it. I knitted this up with one skein of the color Pinky. I believe this is DK weight uh, from Beautiful Simplicity Fiber Company. This was a one of a kind color because this was actually one of the first skeins of yarn that she ever dyed up. Um, this was a botanical dye. I think that she used avocado, um, but this was one of her first experiments in dyeing and getting her feet wet back in 2020. So this is a special, special piece, one of a kind dyed with yarn specifically meant just for me um, and it was really it's it's kind of representative of, of a start of a lot of things because I'd been knitting in 20 before 2020 but not nearly to the extent that I had afterward and, and if it weren't for Astasia starting up beautiful simplicity fiber company I don't know that I really would have even hopped into to knitting as much as I did um, as far as taking on new patterns, being willing to challenge myself. Um, and then I definitely would not be doing this podcast because I wouldn't have a blessed thing to talk about. So, <laughs> so this Orbit scarf for me is a very special piece. The pattern is a lot of fun. Um, it has been a while since I knitted it. So I don't remember all of the details, but I do recommend it because it does have a lot of fun interest in detail. And I remember it knitting up fairly quickly so if you need a light spring scarf because as much as everyone's like spring is happening in March not in Michigan <laughs> not in Michigan so it's a nice one for if you need a layering piece that brings us to finished objects and today's episode only has one finished object but it is a doozy of a finished object if you saw my last episode you probably know what I'm talking about I am talking about the Aurora Cabin Shawl by Stephen West. I saw this pattern. I said, Astasia, dye me a kit because I need to make this thing. Please let me make this thing. And she said, okay, because she's awesome like that. And she came up with the sophisticated chalet kit for this shawl. I talked more about that in the last episode, but she, we talked through colorways and she hand dyed the skeins for this. I think my favorite ended up being the green because you can see here in this first section that it's green but it's got some fun indigo in it and so that was just it made every time I got to knit with that particular color it was just super super fun and interesting but the overall piece is gigantic. I can't oh if I try to reach, I don't have a wingspan long enough. <laughs> I don't have a wingspan long enough to show the entire thing on camera, on screen. So you'll just have to take my word for it that this thing is huge. But I think it's amazing. I did wear it the other day and I got so many compliments. It wasn't even funny. It drapes so nicely but because it is wool, it does keep you warm. I didn't get too hot in it, um, but I did wear it with a short sleeved shirt. Um, so I was careful about how I layered. It is a statement piece. 
if you are working this into your wardrobe, I highly recommend that this is the piece that gets all the attention. Wear some neutrals with it and it's just, it, it pops is what it does. Um, as you know, it starts off pretty small at first up here and then you gradually build out by the end down here. I believe we ended with over a thousand stitches. I want to say like 1,070 some, if I'm remembering the pattern correctly. It's a lot. It's really, it's a lot. So by the time you get down to here, your rows are pretty heavy. Um, I wound up purchasing a, another set of, um, I think it calls for fours, but at the 47 inch mark as recommended, just start there. Just start there because as much as you can try and convince yourself that you can do it on 40 inch needles, you can't. You, you just, it, there's too many. There's too many stitches. So I believe last time I was about halfway through this section right here. I cried with relief once I had finished this section of polka dot striping. I really can't do rows that long of knit one pearl one rib. I just, I just can't. And so, um, that was really, really tough for me. I was really glad when it was done because my wrist could rest. And even though this does take a little work and the rows are really long here and heavy in this lip stitch section, it's not, it's just, it's just different. It's not the movement that really messed things up. So, this section was a relief. And then the chevrons were fun. Again, though, because you're working with so many stitches, it they those rows just take forever. I think they were taking me just an hour one direction, so an hour a row, and, and that was pretty killer. The last part that I fiddled around with a little bit was down here on this edging. So it calls for a knit row of color B, or in this case, our mushroom color, and then to I-cord bind off in color B. It also says though, that you can use any color, in, at least in the pattern, it says you can use any color for your bind off. Well, I started with the charcoal, I got pretty far into it, and I realized I was never gonna have enough yarn to bind off with the charcoal. So I was a little disappointed that I had to scrap that plan. However, I found that if I added in a pearl row, of the mushroom, I got a little bit more exposure of that color. And then I really did not like binding off in the mushroom. So I double checked how much I had um, of the white, the color A compared to my charcoal, and I had significantly more. So I ended up switching over and doing everything in this white color um, for the bind off. And I think that having that slightly wider border of the mushroom really makes it. I I feel like it's nicely hemmed in on both sides by the mushroom and then the white is just a really fun pop. So I'm very, very pleased with how it turned out in the end, but it did take me, I'm willing to bet a couple extra hours of fiddling around to figure out what exactly we wanted that edge to look like. And you know, finding out very sadly that the gray was just not gonna work. Blocking this, was an experiment. <laughs> I had to use my blocking mats in some interesting blocking patterns to try and get the, the full length and then pulling everything out for the points. But I believe like, I just looking at it, I'm really, really happy with the end result. It, it is worth finding a way to aggressively block this thing to really, really open up these slip stitch pattern sections in addition to pretty much opening up everything. It is worth that extra time and effort, especially I think, especially I think for this edge, because I feel like that edge is just really everything. So I am super, super pleased with the end result of this. I think this is definitely more, there were parts where this was a process knit where I enjoyed making it, and then there were parts where that it became a project knit. I would argue that this starts off as a process knit where it's just really fun to do. 
And then by the end, you're like, I know it's going to make a pretty thing. I know it's going to make a pretty thing. Just keep going. It's going to make a pretty thing. And it did. It becomes a project knit. So this beautiful, beautiful shawl is going to be going into the mail tomorrow. And it will be headed off to the local yarn store in Hamilton, Montana. Um, my cousin may or may not hang on to it for a little while first. We'll have to see. But um, she does have kits available, I believe. Um, of the sophisticated chalet so if you really like the colorway and the color combinations on this one you too can make the exact same one for yourself go ahead and check out beautiful simplicity fiber company on instagram or on facebook or straight up on etsy so that's where that can be found um works in progress my works in progress this time around i've only got three one of them I have been working on for ages, and so I almost feel like I shouldn't count. But the other one is pretty, the other two are pretty recent. Um, let's see here. So, the, ooh, a little bit of wet that yarn. That's fun. Anyway, um, <laughs> I am currently working on a wrap me up sweater scarf for my cousin, Astasia. Again, this is going to be, a, this is another sample piece that will go live in the yarn store, but then end up probably with Astasia. So she, cause she dyed this, I don't remember when she dyed this, but she dyed this a while ago and she was telling me when she was working on these, this colorway, just how in love with it she was, how it just kind of sprang forth and, and just was it. And I have to agree with her. It is so good. It's just such a lovely dusty pink and purple. And it's just really, really romantic. Um, Astasia always does a really good job with her colors. I, I have no room for complaint ever. She does so good. Um, she's gotten really skilled at making really, really pretty colorways and making things blend and knowing kind of how things are going to turn out once they're knitted up. So I think this is a, a really good example of, of how her work is growing and, and changing as she keeps keeps dying things up because this is just it's just so stinking pretty this whip has been really fun it's pretty straightforward at this point I have had a little bit of frustration with it down here where we split the sleeve to go into the scarf and the reason that I even care about this at all is because I'm picky <laughs> but also this took more time than I thought it would for my own sake people keep asking me how long it takes me to knit something and I never have an answer for them not really because when I sit down to knit I just knit I enjoy it and I knit pretty much every night usually at least for an hour if not more but I'm I'm not keeping track because I'm just having fun. Well, for this piece, I decided to keep track. And I kind of regret doing that. But I'm committed. So I'm going to find out how long this piece will take me. And so far, we're at about 23 and a half hours invested in this piece. 23 and a half hours, which equates right now to about 43 inches. Um, I have to knit to 83 before I can start the next sleeve, which is 14. I'm not doing the math in my head, but it's, it's a lot. So I'm, a, I'm over halfway, but I'm still at like 23 and a half hours. And frankly, a lot of that comes down to this split. I spent probably a good two, maybe three hours trying to figure out how to make this work for me. Um, the way that they initially have you split here is they have you follow the ribbing and they have this edge become a pearl. No, not a pearl. This edge becomes a knit edge. This edge becomes a pearl edge. Well, because I'm using indie dyed yarn, this edge is always going to be a little more, not finished, but have more yarn to it and look kind of knitty because I'm having to stretch the previous yarn up. Um, whereas this side was supposed to be definitely pearl and clearly was pearl. 
I don't know why that bothered me so much, but it did because I wanted each edge to match. And so I messed around with it and tested first leaving this edge as it was and then doing like a, a decrease so that I was purling on this edge too. Well, but then we have to pull the yarn up, the purl bumps disappeared entirely. And so this still looked like a knitted edge instead of a purled edge. And so I thought that was really frustrating because then you still have what looks like a purl edge on one side and a knit edge on the other side. I don't like that. So I had to rip back to where the split happened and then instead of decreasing on the right hand on this side, I ended up increasing one on this side so that it would be a, a, um, a knit edge on, on this side as well. And I'm finally, finally hit a point where I was happy with that. Um, also trying to make sure that the, the way that I pulled over the, um, the other yarn looked a little bit more cohesive. So later, when I'm done with the flat scarf part, when I go to rejoin back up for the sleeve, I'm gonna have to remember that I need to decrease one on this edge so that it becomes a pearl column again. But yeah, that that was really, really me just being very, very picky. The thing is though, is all said and done, I'm much, much happier with these edges matching and with having the knit purl, knit purl, knit purl on this edge, and then the knit purl, knit purl, knit purl on this edge match. <sighs> what I'm learning is, is that I invest a lot of time in my knitting, not just because I enjoy doing it, but because I tend to go a little further in making specific details be what I want. And I think that if I were maybe a little more relaxed, maybe it wouldn't take me so long. But then again, I don't know. So yeah, learned, learned that this has taken me 23 and a half hours so far. So, but it doesn't feel like that long. <laughs> um, my next piece, my next work in progress, I have not been keeping track of the time on. Uh, this is a piece for myself. I talked about this in my last episode and it is my Zosia wrap by Varen Rose with the brush alpaca silk in pink and it is coming along. This takes me a little bit longer to knit in the sense of the alpaca kind of wants to stick to itself when you're knitting. So sometimes I can't, my needles don't fly through this one as quickly as they probably could, but that's okay. This is more of a decompression piece. So after I've knit like a mad woman on the sweater scarf, I'll pick this up and just knit real slowly. Um, and it's nice to have those every now and then. I also know that um, right now it's, it's pretty, it's not super exciting to look at right now, other than the fact that like I made it through all the way through the increases. And so now I'm just knitting for, for height. Um, but it's very soft. It's very soft and it makes me happy that soon I'm going to have the back piece of a garment and it'll be, I think it's going to be really nice. It's coming together and forming a nice fabric. So this is just a slightly slower piece without so much of a deadline. I hopefully, hopefully next time I have a little more to show for this, maybe I'll be done with the back panel by then and onto, onto a sleeve or a side panel or something, but if I'm not, I'm not. And that's okay. Um, oh, so my final work in progress is one that I have had in my bag and in my purse, my travel, travel knitting for forever. This is my pair of Waiting for Henry socks. Um, I don't remember who the pattern's by or where the yarn is from. I will try and throw it up on the screen. I know that I bought like a 90s neon kit and I like it a lot. Like they, they're super, super cute. Um, the only thing that has me nervous about these is now I'm at a point where the color work is done and that's fine, um, but they just want me to knit. 
and like just knit the whole thing all the way until the toe and then put in an afterthought heel. I have never ever done an afterthought heel and so it has me a little bit skittish. And I think that's probably why, at least part of one of the reasons why I haven't been working on these as much is because I'm scared of that heel. <laughs> I don't I don't know how long I will knit for on these until I do the heel and so I've been procrastinating but it's always nice to know that I have this ready to go if I just need to knit out a little bit. Um, it hasn't been in my purse lately because I've been throwing in um, my my Varen Rose sweater carefully because of the needles but um, I may move it back. I may move it back into my purse and take it with me because it is actually, they are a lot of fun. I just, I'm also at a point where if I knit on one for any length of time, then what I end up having to do is make sure I switch over and knit for the exact same number of rows, which is why when I do two at a time socks, this is a little bit of a challenge for me. I really like to do two at a time on Magic Loop needles, but I only have size one US Magic Loop needles. I probably could get one and a half. Because for myself, I've noticed that I'm kind of an in-between size. If I knit a large sock for myself, it's too wide. It, it doesn't have the negative ease that I want. But if I do a, um, a medium size, if there's color work or if I've knit too tightly, on like on a US one, then it's just a little too snug. So I'm still really working to get the, the sock fit that I want. But that's part of the reason why these are on US one and a half is because I knew it had the color work. And so um, these are my only US one and a half. But they are the, um, side note, these are the Addy Turbo Sock, sock Wunder. Sock Wunder. And they've got a longer needle and a shorter side on for the night with the nine inch nine inch circulars, which I really, really, really like because it gives me much more control. Um, because I definitely move and control my right hand needle more than my left. Um, so it makes it really nice to knit just a little bit faster. But then again, I'm knitting separately. So once I get through a row over here, then I have to stop and make sure that I switch to a row over there. So that might be another reason why I haven't, <laughs> haven't just sat down and, and knitted on those. Um, but mostly I think it's the after heel thought or no, after, wow. Mostly I think it's the afterthought heel that is scaring me away. So if you have any tips or recommendations on doing an afterthought heel, please leave it in the comments below. I would love to have some support with that one. Um, yeah, uh, so project planning. I have been thinking about projects quite a bit. I have three things that I would like to knit up that I have the yarn for. That's the big thing is I've got the yarn for these. The first is the Moonglade Tea by Row Row and Caves, um, also known as Kelly Menzies. Um, she um, put out this really pretty, it's super cute. It's got this lovely lace detailing around the yoke and the top of the sleeves, and then at the bottom as well. I, um, I have all the yarn for it, and I picked out yarn specifically for it. It just hasn't been caked up. Um, I've printed the pattern off. I've highlighted all of my things. There's really nothing stopping me other than I should really finish up with this sweater scarf first. Um, but I don't know, I've been holding back. And so I, I just need to cake up the yarn and do it. Um, the next project that I'm gonna be working on is, or that I would like to anyway, is the Luna Tea. Um, and I would probably, I've got a lot of extra Puna um, by Drops alpaca like 100% alpaca off-white the stuff that I knit up my sweater in and I think that that would make a super super cute Luna tee with the ribbing and the neck and it would just be good the third thing that I want to knit depending on how much yarn I have left after I do the Luna tee and although I might just do the Luna tee first not the Luna tee I might just do this first it's Augustine's number 22 bow so it's this cute little bow and you tie, you, uh, you put the, uh, a hair elastic on the underside of it and then you'll, you put it up in your hair and then you've got a big, big pretty knitted bow. I know, I know I'm not 12, but like, it's just so cute and it would match my sweater. <laughs> so 
I'm really debating doing that first and having kind of like a palette cleanser project before I hop into two more garments. Um, but then I get all bunchy that like, oh, what if I won't have enough yarn to do the bow and to do the shirt? And, you know, I probably do. But, you know, if we're going to be, if we're going to talk being practical and finishing projects you've started, I have a sweater that I'm supposed to be working on for my husband still. So I maybe should do that first. Hard to do, though, when you've got acquisitions. So for my acquisitions, I'm re I did really good. I wanted to buy more things, but I didn't. The first thing I bought was this skein called Bouquet by Birch Grove. Um, so Christina over at Birch Grove. Isn't it so pretty? This skein, I, I had seen it more than once on Instagram. And I told myself no. I said I didn't need it. But then it came back in stock and I found a $50 gift card and I said, ha ha, <laughs> and I bought it. <laughs> I am in love. Like I couldn't, I, I couldn't get this out of my brain. There were a couple, I was debating between this and a big cone of um, DK weight um, wool that was not super wash. It would have been really pretty. Like I had, I had plans that I could use that for it just felt very practical and this felt kind of not frivolous I would hate to call this frivolous it just this was the pretty option and I was like man I really should get that big cone of yarn I'd have so much DK weight yarn then but I couldn't I couldn't get this out of my brain it was it was in there and it was in there deep um and so I bought it I when it as soon as it came back in stock I just I had to this skein is a sock fingering weight. Uh, I specifically got the sock fingering weight at 75.25 with superwash merino and nylon so that I could make myself some really, really, really pretty socks. I just, I can't get over the creams and then the light pinks and then the light blues and the grays and then the deeper mer merlot colors. I just, I want a house that has all these colors in it. <laughs> does, that, does that make sense? These, these are, these are my colors. These are my colors. I love them. Um, in addition to the skein, I bought myself some super, super cute stitch stoppers in roses. Aren't they adorable? Actually, actually what I should do, I hadn't used them yet because I was being silly and waiting to, to use them before I showed you, but here. They're so small and petite. Is that okay? Sorry. Boop. Isn't that cute? I really like them. They're super adorable. So I'm very, very pleased. Very pleased with my acquisitions and with my works in progress. And with being done with that shawl. Um, I don't have anything for Instagram inspiration again this episode. And it's not because there aren't amazing things out there. There definitely are some really, really cool things out there. I just... I feel a little overloaded still. And so I'm really focusing on what I've gotten the yarn for and what I have patterns for. I'm trying to be conscientious about really working on projects. Not to say that in Instagram inspiration should only be for things that you, you know, are actually going to make. Sometimes it's just fun to see some really cool projects. Um, I just, for my own sake, I need to focus on getting some other things done first before I hop back into scrolling through Instagram and picking out some favorites. But, um, yeah. So next episode, I, I hope to have at least three things picked out that have been really inspiring. And then I may think about too how I'm viewing that section. I have a tendency to want to think of it as like in inspiration to make things, which true, but it also could be Instagram appreciation and not just inspiration. So, um, cause it's always really cool to see what new and different things or even just what really nicely made things are out there. 
um, and giving other creators a shout out. So we'll have to see how I approach that section next episode. But in the meantime, thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, as I talked about the Aurora Cabin Shawl and my works in progress and admitting to myself just how long I spend knitting. But we're not going to talk about that anymore. I spend when I spend knitting. It's fine. <laughs> anyway, um, hope you've had a good time. I hope to see you back. If you are so inclined, please comment, like, subscribe, all that fun YouTube nonsense. It really helps out my, my little channel. Although, you know, if you feel like it, great. If you don't, that's cool too. <laughs> anyway, I will catch you all later and I hope you have a good one. Bye.